How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffle Rallet, and welcome back to a brand new video, guys. Now, I'm recording this at midnight, but we have some massive Pokemon news coming out right now from Japan. This is genuinely big information. So, it turns out that, according to Centro here, the Pokemon Company has registered a new subsidiary. So, yes, the Pokemon Company has registered a new subsidiary, and a subsidiary is just a, um, a company underneath the main company, right, um, called Pokemon Works and is located in the same building as Ilka. We have no idea what this is about, but we can speculate that the Pokemon Company and Ilka have set up a support studio to help Game Freak develop new games in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, this is massive. I literally had to get out of bed to film this video. Like, I was already ready to sleep, um, but I had to record this one. This is massive news, and there's other people posting about it as well. Uh, the Pokemon Company have filed a new trademark in Japan, Pokemon Works. It should be noted that this is a new division, which is located in the same building as Ilka in the Shinjuku district of Tokyo. Um, and yeah, this is this is just insane. Even Joe Merrick said the Pokemon Company uh, in Japan have set up a new subsidiary, Pokemon Works. Uh, the trademarks just got pushed and the company was registered a week ago, um, which is interesting. So it was registered like about a week after Pokemon Day, which is very intriguing uh, to say the least, which makes me wonder. And I have a bit of a theory here. I think this company probably has been in the works or this subsidiary has probably been in the works for a while. And I think this is the company that might be working on future DLCs as well as spin-off slash um, remake games. Like anything that isn't mainline like new gen or I guess games like Legends. So anything DLC related, anything remake related, any other games like that that they want to make done um, or don't have time over at Game Freak to work on will be given to Pokemon Works, right? That would be the actual company doing it now. Pokemon Works, which is basically just associated with Ilka, right? It would be people from Ilka working there, plus whatever other employees they want to, uh, you know, pump in there. But this is massive. Um, and they say here, no idea what the company is at this time. We'll let you all know. Apparently, again, the company's set up in Shinjuku in Tokyo, the same building as Ilka. This, again, is massive. Uh, I mean, literally, my point when I tweeted out this and I made my whole, like, tweet here, I said, hey, yo, this is interesting. This would allow for more time to be invested in new generations and legend titles while side stuff like DLC or remakes are diverted away. This is kind of huge, not gonna lie, which I still stand by that tweet. This is massive. Like the idea that Ilka, and again, I know some of you might think to yourself, oh, I hate Ilka, they made BDSP. Now, some of you don't know that Ilka has made more than just BDSP. Um, they made a fantastic game called One Piece Odyssey. Now, One Piece Odyssey, they were allowed to work for five years on that game, okay? They were given five years, and they were given full freedom with this game. Now, One Piece Odyssey is a fantastic game. I actually own it on Steam. It is a beautiful game. It looks good. It, it runs good. It is a solid, solid, solid game, though my computer is not really running very solid right now. But either way, it is a really good-looking game as well in terms of graphics. Like you guys can see, this is a good-looking game. Um, it's not like a, a chibi-styled game from, you know, um, from like 2010. It's a really good-looking game. It's a really well-made game um, that required a lot of time and effort. And they put that time and effort in to make it in the kind of anime art style and everything. And they did a good job, okay? This is a, a game that I think took about five years uh, with two years of like pre-production and planning and then three years of proper actual development, right? Like which they spent developing it. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here is, and I'm going to look up something else I can show you about Ilka, um, which is... They are legitimately like, um, you know, an actual like studio that has worked on a lot of interesting stuff. And they're even here, if you guys look on N Nintendo's uh, fandom page, um, you guys can actually see that Ilka is a developer based in Japan. It was formed in 2000. Uh, it literally stands for I Love Computer Art. Uh, the company was founded by former members of Kavia and Game Republic. They have studios in Nagoya and Kyoto in addition to their main office in Shinjuku, which is literally a game where Pokemon Company right now is going to start or have their subsidiary Pokemon Works, right? Again, and that name, that name Pokemon Works could be for anything. It could be for um, the Pokemon TCG, for um, merch, stuff like that. But I don't think that's the case. I think it's going to be for Pokemon Works, aka games, like video games and video game products, stuff like that. I think it's what's going to be developed here. And it makes sense. Like, look at this, okay? 
I know we have Legends ZA coming out. And also, I know we've seen that Game Freak have said, like, hey, you know, not Game Freak, but I guess the Pokemon company have said, like, hey, we kind of want to, you know, put more time and effort into the games. Well, what's the best way to do that? Well, have a different studio. Like, they already did this once with BDSP, right? They gave it to Ilka, they made BDSP, and BDSP sold a lot of copies. And you guys know, the company was most notably notable for developing Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which are remakes of Diamond and Pearl. The remakes uh, garnered mixed reception due to poor overworld graphics. Uh, same battles as in the originals and the lack of other decent features such as Mega Evolution. However, again, they did, they were faithful remakes. They recreated Diamond and Pearl. That's still what they ended up doing. And they still sold 15.6 million copies. So they still made all that money. And again, my point is that this, like, look away from the fact that Ilka media made BDSB. Like, look away from that fact. And let's look at the other things. They will now have essentially a third studio involved, right? We're going to have a third studio involved. And when I say third studio, I'm talking about like this. Game Freak has always been making the mainline games. Every game up until BDSB, literally up until BDSB, every single Pokemon mainline game. When I say mainline, I'm talking about mainline Pokemon games that come out on the main consoles and that kind of stuff. I'm not talking about Colosseum. I'm not talking about uh, Mystery Dungeon. I'm talking about mainline games. So that's everything from Red, Blue, Green, all the way until Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, all the way to Sword and Shield, all the way to Scarlet and Violet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But BDSP was the only game and the first time where they weren't made by Game Freak because there's only two companies that were involved with making Game Freak games. Game Freak was one, and Creatures Inc. Creatures Inc. was the second company, and Creatures Inc., on their hand, on their side of things, they've always been just there to make 3D models, right? They're not really involved with, like, most of the game development outside of 3D model work. They make all the 3D models, they do everything to do with the Pokemon TCG, um, anything to do with that, like, side of things. 3D modeling and Pokemon trading card game, that's what Creatures Inc. does. And they do that because Creatures Inc. owns a 33.3% stake and guess what? They own a 33.3% stake in the Pokemon company. And it was founded by who? None else than Ishihara. Yes, Ishihara founded Creatures Inc. That's why he's currently the president of Pokemon company. Basically, all these companies, uh, like Creatures, Game Freak, they all have somebody that's important to the franchise of Pokemon that has some stake in it. And guess what? Ilka is the first one that doesn't. Ilka does not have a stake in there. Instead of, the, instead of it, the Pokemon company, it's not really acquiring Ilka, but it is basically kind of putting itself right next to it and creating a subsidiary that's supposed to kind of uh, utilize Ilka to the, the fullest extent. Because remember, Ilka has 288 employees. That's a lot of people, right? That's a lot of people to have involved. So I think this is only a positive. And I know there's going to be doom and gloomers. There's going to be people, and I already expected from like replies and stuff, um, you know, that people are going to say, you know, you know, bad stuff. But this is nothing but a win, in my opinion. Like people will see it and be like, oh, it's Ilka. Oh, it's Ilka. Oh, I don't want Ilka. This is a net positive, okay? Like I'm going to put it right now. This is a good thing. This will just allow for certain games that shouldn't be in, in Game Freak's hands anyways so they can focus more on important stuff to be given somewhere else. Like, let's put it like this, okay? Let's say that from today, right, from 2024, from today, and this is, again, just a speculative, uh, not an actual guess or anything, but I'm just making a, a theory of sorts, right, or a little bit of a thought, thought experiment. Now, look at it like this. If Ilka from today and Game Freak from today, if they all together set up a, a kind of goal, let's say they have two games ready to go. They have Generation 10 and they have Legends ZA ready to go. And from this day forward, they all start development on new products. Now, they have literally two games ready to go. Let's say they released one this year, like just as a, again, thought experiment. Legends ZA comes out in 2024 and they have Generation 10 ready to go for 2025. That means two games for two years sorted. In that time, for those two years, while those two games are literally out in the public and people can play them, they don't need any more development time, they can already start working on new stuff. So in those two years, they can already start working on stuff. They can skip a year and everybody would be able to have a game to release plus more stuff to work on after that. My point is basically that within just a little bit of time, we can have yearly Pokemon releases going like crazy again, but the quality can go up because Ilka can make up those years where we may not get the most banger of Pokemon games, but we will get, like, you know, a spin-off, a regular remake, a weird little, you know, strange Pokemon game to fill in the time while Game Freak works on the bigger projects. And I think that might be where this might go. Again, it's just a theory. <laughs> it's just all a theory. But this is massive, okay? This is huge. I, this is like the last thing I expected on my bingo card, which this opens up a very important thing. And this is something I've spoken about in several videos, okay? I've talked about this so many times. 
And that's probably annoyed some of you people at this point. But this opens up the possibility that what Riddler Koo, like was hinting at and what a lot of those leakers were hinting at about a diamond, sorry, a black and white game, a black and white remake coming out this year may still be possible. Like it may still be a possibility just based off of the fact that this has been announced. And the reason I say this is because this was registered one week after Pokemon Day. And two weeks after uh, Pokemon Day, it was finally revealed that it was registered and actually officially went through. However, this reminds me again of the release schedule and the announcement timeframes for previous Pokemon remakes. Again, I will show you this list and I'll show this every day until May and June. Once May and June have passed, I'll stop bringing this up, but I'm going to bring it up until then. But here's the point. Back in the day, the third versions as well as the remake games used to actually get an announcement uh, of the games happening you know, around May and June. They didn't get announced in February during Pokemon. They got announced later in the year, around the middle of the year. So around six months to five months in, around May or June. As you guys can see right here, May 7th, 2014, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire was announced. June 6th, 2017, Ultra Sun and Moon was announced. May 30th of 2018, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee were both announced. And the first time that that wasn't the case, the first time we didn't have a remake announced later in the year was B. DSP with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus. Now, here's what I'm going to say. I think those were announced together because that game was made, like, you know, in partnership with Ilka and everything like that, and Game Freak oversaw it and everything. I think the reason we didn't see that announced here is because Pokemon Works, this new company, this new subsidiary company, will actually be the company alongside Ilka to develop whatever game is coming out this year. And because of that exact reason, this game is not important to show off right now because the company that literally is working on it doesn't technically exist yet. It now exists. Right now, it actually exists. And maybe it will be announced later in the year. Maybe that's why they've waited. Again, this is all just a theory, and I'd love to know what you guys think about it because, again, it's just a fun thing to mention. Um, but, yeah, since we're already recording a video this late at night, I thought I might as well include a, a little bit of a post about a rumor I just saw on uh, 4chan just as I was going to sleep. I saw this as I was just browsing. But, basically, this person said uh, from Anonymous here, saying, Pokemon Legends EA is both a prequel and sequel to X and Y, which sounds a bit nuts to say the least uh he says you start off in the present day takes place after x and y which is where the hub city of lumios is located which um hmm, okay that's pretty crazy um so he says it started off in the present day takes place after x and y which is where the hub city of lumios is okay you continuously travel to the past where lumios is a wide open and vast wilderness and complete missions now that actually sounds actually kind of realistic like that just sound like a, like a cool idea that would make sense like i know it might sound a little bit far-fetched but i think the idea of us time traveling doesn't seem that crazy now as you continue to go back in the past and change events the city in the future changes Ooh, ultimately unlocks zygarde and go back in time to stop the firing of the ultimate weapon uh this has ramifications of m evolution or mega evolution in the series moving forward in a way that i won't spoil now primal xerneas and primal of Vettel are a thing okay similar to i guess primal versions in uh, Oras. These starters are Snivy, Torchic, and Piplup, but they have regional forms. So not new mega Megas. He's saying there's going to be regional forms for them, which cool and all. Uh, Chespin, Fennekin, and Froki lines get Mega Evolution, along with 11 other Pokemon lines. Okay, that's oof, that would be pretty sick. Still no Mega Flygon. There is also a Paradox form and Cross Gen Evolution. So yeah, that's a little bit of a quick rumor I wanted to share to you guys. And again, I'd love to know what you guys' thoughts is. What do you feel about this? I think this is a positive. You guys can let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think this is a positive? Do you think this is a negative? about Ilka being basically like where they're creating this new subsidiary called Pokemon Works. And I wonder if maybe they're calling it Pokemon Works to disassociate it from Ilka so that people don't have the perception that it's being made by anyone else by, besides Pokemon. Because the company that are basically creating the subsidiary is literally called Pokemon Works, right? Like Pokemon Works. In, in an ironic way, it's saying like, hey, Pokemon Works, boys. Pokemon is Pokemon, you know, we, we work hard. Or Pokemon functions. It's not a broken mess. It's a working product. Again, it's a bit of a joke I'm making, but it, it still stands, right? At the end of the day, they literally made a subsidiary company that will now be the, the, the when you see the game, whatever game they're working on, whatever product this company's working on, if it is video games, because again, it could be something else, it could be something else, but it would make, like, make no sense. Because like I said, Creatures Inc. is already working on the Pokemon TCG. Uh, Bandai Namco and like, you know, I think some of those... Um, like Ban Presto and those companies work on the merch in Japan and stuff. And then there's other companies that handle like merch in Europe and in America. So 
none of those make sense for this. The only thing that makes sense for this is like maybe uh, like a studio to handle some massive new project like an MMO, which let's be real, that's not going to happen. But like the most logical thing is here, video game. They're going to work on video games. They're going to work on stuff like remakes, which Game Freak probably doesn't want to be working on remakes. They probably want to give that away to someone else because they already did it with BDSP. They already showed us with BDSP that they're willing to give it away. Why? Because when they were working on Legends Arceus, they started development in 2018, okay? They started development of that game in 2018, okay? 2018. They literally started it at the same time that Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, like, basically was releasing, about to release, like, slightly before Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee released. They started developing Legends Arceus. So already then, even by the end, by winter of 2018, they started w working on Scarlet and Violet. So they were working on Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet. There's no way that they could fit in with Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet another game in the middle. So what did they do? They gave that to Ilka. And Ilka basically had two years, okay? Like two bloody years to make that. So guess what? They can do the same thing now. They can have a company called Pokemon Works alongside Ilka to make those remake games because then Pokemon is always there to tell them what they can and can't do at Ilka if they're the ones involved making it. They can always tell them like, mm, no, 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 no. You can't do that. You know, that's that's not okay. You can't do that. That's that's mm, that's a big no-no. You can't do that. Mm, mm, we're not okay with that. That's, mm, that's not what you're supposed to do. You can easily do that, right? They can easily just stop them and be like, nope, that's this, you know, it's not what we need. You need to do it this way because there will be a direct contact from, from Pokemon at all times, and it will be a Pokemon Works game. It wouldn't be an Ilka game. It would be a Pokemon Works game. And also, it would give them exactly two more years, just like they did with BDSP. It would give them again two years to develop another game, a.k.a. a black and white remake, which would piss a lot of people off. But honestly, I don't care. If I can get more Pokemon this year and have fun with it while I wait for the bigger, better product that I hope Legends ZA is going to be because I loved Arceus and at some point I want to do a whole video essay talking about Legends Arceus and how great of a game I think it is. I think it's a good thing that Game Freak doesn't have to handle remakes. Give that away. It's good. You can handle and make a better Generation 10, a better Legends ZA, a better set of games instead of just focusing on pumping out the remakes plus the regular games plus the Legends games. It's too much work for one studio to handle. This is the perfect opportunity. Again, BDSP came out in 2020. One, if I'm not mistaken, 2021. Since 2021, if they started development after 2021, like, uh, sorry, after BDSP came out, if Ilka and Pokemon Works, this subsidiary or whatever uh, that exists now, if they could combine, started working, or even if just Ilka on its own, started working on the next product, aka Pokemon Black and White Remakes, just as again, it's just an example, just an ID. If they started working on that already, okay, if they already started working on that in 2021, by the time of this year, 2024, that will give them exactly three years, more or less, right? So you had, I guess you could say that. So you had 2022, 2023, and then 2024 to finish a game. Three years, the same cycle that's given to Game Freak for all of their games, and that would be perfect. That's more time that they, that they had than they had with BDSP. So honestly, frankly, to me, that'd be perfect. But ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. I recorded this very late at night, so I'm extremely tired and I want to go to sleep, but I thought I would record this because I got way too excited uh, reading the news. Like, I just got so hyped up, man. Um, but yeah, and uh, it's like I'm seeing people like... Uh, like uh, Jay here saying, we're definitely getting Johto game, Johto Ilka games this year, Ruffled. Um, watch my coup theory I sent you a while ago happen, lol. But yeah, so again, I think this is massive. I think this this news is huge. Um, and again, um, even Centra says it's a good it's a good thing. If our speculation is accurate, then it means that we uh, that we get more staff for the main series games. This also means a tighter control by the Pokemon company over borrowed staff from Ilka. Uh, then further wait, then further smaller games can be developed entirely by Pokemon Works, leaving Game Freak with more time for bigger games. Exactly, so they can keep up that yearly release of mainline Pokemon games, but those Pokemon mainline games can now become smaller in scale, right? Like remakes or weird little spin-off games like Let's Go or stuff like that, right? Because Let's Go is not a spin-off. It's still a mainline game, but kind of like a weird mishmash of games can exist now outside of, of Game Freak's responsibility. Whereas Game Freak wouldn't have to worry about that. You have a whole different company handling that so you can keep their yearly releases going. Because remember, Pokemon has not stopped releasing games since 2015. They've kept that schedule going like a machine since 2015. 2015 was the only year they took a break. Since then, 
2016, Sun and Moon. 2017, Ultra Sun and Moon. 2018, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. 2019, Sword and Shield. 2020, Sword and Shield DLC with the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra. 2021, BDSP. 2022, Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet. That's two games in one year, okay? 2023, Scarlet and Violet DLC. And 2024, so far nothing, but already an announcement for 2025. So will 2024 be the year we get nothing? Or will 2024 be the year where Pokemon Works, this new subsidiary, releases their first game? Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.